This is your girl, Marky Lemon Drow, real estate keynote speaker and international best-selling author. And I know you didn't think you was going to see me two times in one day, but I had to bring this goodness on over here to you. I am, of course, you know, I'm a proud mother. So anytime I see young people living their best life because they're doing something that they love and enjoy every single day, I get ecstatic. I just want you to know that. I get very, very excited as a mother, okay? So today, look, we're we going to talk about these trailer homes, and I have this beautiful young married couple with me today that they're expecting their first baby. We're having us a, a look, we're having us a trailer park baby, baby. We have us a little bundle of joy. Jay and Samara Harvey, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm, I'm just so proud of y'all. I don't know what to do. I tell people in the world of real estate, if they're under the age of 40, they can call me T.T. Markey. So I'm your new T.T., whether you know it or not. I want you to tell everyone on Facebook what it is that you do and what you have accomplished in the last two years, because it's freaking amazing. Yeah. So uh, first of all, we want to thank you, uh, Auntie Markey, for having us. This is amazing. <laughs> we love coming on the show and bringing value whenever we can. So uh, what we actually do, we actually invest in mobile homes and we also teach new real estate investors how to flip mobile homes. So up to date, we've um, closed over 400 mobile home transactions. And we've also helped over 800 students get involved in our academy to go and close their first deal. Yeah, it's just, you know, amazing to be able to help people create financial freedom, yeah. create generational wealth. Um, and that's really what we're passionate about is yeah. giving people the tools to really build their future for them and their families. Wow. Okay. So, and all of this has happened in what times? Like it's been a short period of time, right? Yeah. yeah. So we closed our first deal in 2017, January, 2017. So it's been about three full years uh, going on our fourth year now of actually closing deals and working the mobile home business. We started in real estate and that didn't work out too well for us. And so we needed a new opportunity. And that's how we came, we came across mobile home investing. And then it's been over a year and a half with uh, Trailer Cash Academy, which is our education platform. So it hasn't been a, been a bunch of time, but we've just been like blessed and highly favored and, and accomplished a lot in a short amount of time. Wow. So what made you pick trailers as your niche? Ooh, I think, um, to be honest, I think trailers picked us. So um, we started off in the, the real estate investment side. And um, man, uh, we when we got involved, we were like, hey, we're all guns out. Let's go out. Let's show out. And uh, we got involved in two really bad deals to start off. First of all, uh, we had a, a shady mentor. We met this guy through one of those RIA meetings. We actually looked at him like a father figure. Mm -hmm. He ended up being a scammer. He scammed us out of $30,000. Um, there was a deal we got into. We were so green. We didn't do our due diligence. We didn't realize the deal was actually in a foreclosure. So 30 grand there. And then right after that, we got involved in a burnout property. This house didn't have a roof on it, no windows, but we thought, why not this be our first deal? Uh, we were told, we were informed we would get a return back within three months. We put 60 grand into this home. It took us over 15 months to um, see our money again and uh, get a small return. So we were pretty much, you know, broke, but we weren't broke minded. We were like, hey, we educated ourselves up to this point, even though it's ugly. I know we can educate ourselves out of this. And luckily we had some good friends around us. They invited us to another meeting. There was a guy there. Uh, He's talking about real estate deals, but he was talking about something different. This guy was like 85 years old. He was talking about mobile home deals and how he was generating 20 to $50,000 a month, just flipping mobile homes. He wasn't really even using much of his money. If he did, it was between $2,000 to $10,000. He's like, man, if you guys are not doing this, you're already investing in real estate, you're kind of missing the boat. So I took all this information, ran home to Samira, told her about it, and she was like, nah, she wasn't having it. She thought mobile homes was like trailer <laughs> trash. So it was a lot of like convincing for her. But, I was uh, not having it. We had already <laughs> lost all that money. Yeah. And then he's coming talking about trailer parks. And I was just, it wasn't, it wasn't a go. But, but after we did some research <laughs> together, we saw, man, there's an opportunity not just to make money, but there's an affordable housing crisis going on in America that nobody's talking about. And we were like, man, this is our opportunity 
to uh, to just serve. We know we're going to make our money back, but we need to make an impact. And we thought this was the best way. What I'm loving is the affordable housing. I mean, because actually this is a cure to that entire issue. Right. And so let me ask you this. With that being said, and understanding that affordable housing is an issue in in every metropolitan area in this country, and I know that you might not want to say nothing, but do you have a long term strategic plan for helping to solve that crisis? Because it's really it it really, really is a crisis in in every metropolitan area in the country. Yeah. So that's a really great question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let Samara talk with this, too, but. We know we can't solve it alone. So our long term plan is like to say, hey, how can we 10x the individuals getting involved in mobile home investing? We know up to this point we've gotten over 800 students. But in the next 10 years, how can we get that to 8000 students? Because we know there's power in numbers. And some of these students that are coming in are not just coming in trying to solve the crisis with individual homes. They're actually trying to invest in mobile home parks or create their own park. So. We say like, hey, it's not all about what can we do, me and Samira. It's like, what can our TCA family do as a community? So with us, our long-term goal is to 10X our 800 students that we've gotten so far so we can have a bigger impact all over the country. Yeah, and the amazing things about manufactured homes is they can build these in factories in eight days. It takes eight days to build a house. And then they can ship it across the country anywhere, all over the world, all over the country, you can ship it. Um, and the demand for these homes is through the roof. I think that's what surprised us the most. It's like, maybe you don't want to live in a mobile home, but there's a huge market of buyers out there that need this affordable housing. When we post properties, we get hundreds of responses, especially if it's, even if the home needs repairs, even if it's not in perfect condition, the fact that it's affordable, you know, a family can get in there, they're bigger than apartments, they give more more privacy, you can put it on land. You know, there's so many benefits to these homes. It's just a lot of people overlook it. Okay, so they can manufacture a home in eight days. You have 800 students that you could turn into 8,000. We're going to 10 times this. Now, you know what just hit me? I was in a class with Danielle Leslie. I'm in her private coaching group. And she does, she develops online courses, probably number one person right now in the country. Make a long story short, we live in our house and I didn't do a, we didn't do a lease for the house. But as I was sitting there talking to her, listening to her, I'm like, oh, their apartment is leased through the company. So I tell my husband this morning, I said, you know what? I said, we want to, because we live in Chicago on the South side, it's cold. I said, we can lease the next place under my company. But guess what? You just gave me the idea. I need to lease or, or buy a mobile home and then lease it back. Right. And then I have ownership. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but you just got me to Florida. But better yet, think of I'm thinking about this now. I could have a place in Florida, a place in Texas and a place in Arizona. Like I could have me a couple of second homes and don't have to choose that final destination. Right. And have mobile home. And I could actually lease them all back to the, the company. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> but for those who don't need that affordable housing element. Right. Get your get your other home and make it a mobile home. Yeah. Right. Oh, OK. Keep going now, because, you know, I just, I just got excited. No, I mean, I, nice. Hey, you got me excited because that's a lot of what our buyers are thinking, too. They're not necessarily thinking like a, a corporate lease, but they're saying like, man, I'm looking at this mobile home. I can come and buy this from you for ten thousand dollars here in Florida. And then I've got family out in Texas as well. I might spend fifteen thousand dollars over there. So you all in for twenty five thousand versus them buying a single family house in Texas and then one in Florida. It's all about the affordable housing crisis going on. And some people actually choose to live that type of lifestyle. It's more affordable. They're choosing that option. They just need more people like us, mobile home investors, to come and help them solve their problem, get them to what they need. Yeah, put the deals together. Also, I would say probably historically for African-Americans coming out of metropolitan areas, we got to get rid of the Jones syndrome. You know, uh, everybody wants this big, fabulous house on that ideal block and that ideal community. When we come from contribution and we stop 
start to help others, we can actually benefit more long term. And I'll be honest with you, coming out of Illinois, which is like dead bottom. What is it like the 39th state for mobile homes? Right. I'm like, OK, I don't see a lot of um, mobile home communities. Now, when I cross the border and I go into Indiana, I see a plethora of them. But Illinois just hit, historically isn't one of those states. But we also have seen, I would call it the exit. Right. So many people have left Illinois, especially during the pandemic, in order to go to Indiana, in order to go to Ohio, where life is more affordable. But now that they're living uh, or working remotely, these places, this makes more economic sense. Right. So that flexibility. So I'm definitely seeing that there's going to be increased need and demand. I think that in the state of Illinois, we probably need to have more mobile communities because the cost of living and people's desire to leave, because now it makes living in, in Illinois more affordable, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, or California more affordable. Right. Yeah. Or, or these other high high price uh, states. Now, I know that you have a very robust YouTube channel, over 25,000 subscribers. And we were talking about your overall strategy. And you shared with me some of your, your, your Google, right, your Google systems that you're using. Can you share with the audience? Um, and I love why YouTube, because you told me already, but I want you to tell them why YouTube, because I need them to understand the words that are coming out of your mouth and what has led to your success. So why YouTube? And then tell me some of your Google strategies. Yeah, YouTube, we really decided YouTube because um, it's a search engine. Yeah. And we knew that we have information that we know people need to see, and they're already searching for it. Yeah. We just have to pop up. We wanted to be the people, the go-to people when someone is already searching for mobile home investing. And even in Google, obviously that's a search engine, YouTube yeah. and Google partnered together. Um, and we saw that there's a huge opportunity. There was a wide open blue ocean for us on YouTube at, You know, when we first started our channel. There's not a lot of people talking about mobile home investing. Yeah. And so we were like, hey, this is an opportunity for us to come present ourselves as experts, give a ton of value yeah. and be the people that pop up first whenever somebody's searching for mobile home investing or learning how to do this. And you mentioned Google. Oh, well, here's what I just heard you just say. You read the book, Blue Ocean Strategy. That's <laughs> what I just heard. I mean, now I know they didn't hear that. So I want them to go. And let me say this. I believe the book is a hard read. But I believe they can get it on audio, especially if you keep you a good old library card. You can go get it for free. Right. I want everyone to read Blue Ocean Strategy. And it's basically about creating your own lane. And in creating your own lane, you have an abundance of opportunities. In the world of real estate, we have essentially a lot of followers, people who are going to open up a company based on a company that already exists, not opening a new company to solve a different issue, right? It's I'm gonna change the colors, but we're gonna implement the same identical strategies and systems instead of being unique. So Blue Ocean Strategy, you created your own lane and it's in its infancy state and you add a whole new element to that, which means you already know you have an abundance of opportunity ahead of you, but, but, but keep going. Exactly. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think you, you're all right. And it's all about finding your your USP. What's my unique selling proposition? How can I create my lane still stand out? How can I serve the client different? We talked about YouTube. We also talked about Google because we know Google owns YouTube. When those clients are thinking about selling their home, they're going to that search engine nowadays. They're going to Google and they're literally typing in, how can I sell my mobile home, Indiana? Where to sell my mobile home, Indiana? So we're thinking about it like, man, we know the search engine is there. Why aren't we popping up? So once we put two and two together, we said, hey, we need to utilize YouTube. We also need to utilize Google. We need to have videos as well as different blogs on there talking about our services and how we can serve our clients because we're looking at our competition. They're just not doing that. So it just took us taking some time to educate ourselves, put ourselves in the right position. Now, not only are we thriving on the YouTube side, we're also thriving on the Google side where our students are now benefiting from those leads as well all over the country. So you're using Google and YouTube for video sales funnels mm -hmm. that you now are able to provide leads back to what was the 800 students who shall become the 8,000 yeah. students. Yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, the same skill set. It's yeah. about, you know, getting your keywords together, knowing what people are searching for, mm -hmm. knowing how to put your message in front of them on Google and on YouTube. And um, because of the platform we've built, we get a ton of opportunities that come into our inbox. We're like, hey, students, we got students all over across the nation. Yeah. We want to provide them to them. And you mentioned something about just the blue ocean and having that abundance, having that abundance mindset. You know, we could easily sit here and say, oh, man, we gotten all these leads. Let's try to knock these out together. And then out of all the leads, we might only get through one to 2%. It's like, how can I help someone else? Because by doing that, again, we talking about the impact that we're making. They can go out, make an impact in their community. And now we're all winning. We're helping so many more people out than just focusing on ourselves. So if we were to come back go back in time to brand new trailer home you, right? You've done a lot of great things. You've implemented systems, tools, and strategies. Because I talk to new real estate professionals every single day, what would be the first thing you would do now talking to yourself then? Ooh, really great question. That is a really yeah. great question. Um, want to attack it first? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say... The very first thing is really just understanding the process and really how to serve the clients. I think mm -hmm. that is like in everything, you really have to understand who you're serving, understanding the, basically the avatar of who you're really getting involved with. I think that took us a while in the very beginning. We were just trying to get the deals done. But once we really understood our client, we our messaging became so much more clearly, our marketing was so much better. And we're able to actually serve them because we know where they are, what they need, and who, and you know exactly the whole profile behind them. So just really understanding your client, I think is key. I think that's a good one. I really think um, protecting your time because being a new real estate investor, period, you're so focused on doing so many different things, but you end up really getting nowhere because you're focusing on all the marketing strategies versus just focusing on the one that's going to move your needle forward. Keeping track of your, your KPI, those key performance indicators, which things are working. Some of the things you're doing just not working right now, but there are some that are actually moving the needle forward. I would just focus on those things keep doing those things, improving on those so I can get more leads and make my business grow faster. So first of all, you sound like you've been doing this your entire life. Anytime we're talking about KPIs and avatars, okay? Um, <laughs> which, you know, people, they come, they talk to me all the time. They're like, well, Marky, are you going to use TikTok? And I'm like, I don't need TikTok. I mean, I just keep telling people it, it, but it's so shiny, right? It's so bright and you, you're drawn to it. And I'm like, I don't need no dang on TikTok. And at the moment that Instagram brought reels over and I already have a built in audience there, I'm like, I don't need TikTok. You know, now might I use TikTok to create a video because actually the platform to build is a lot easier to me over there. Yes. But that doesn't mean that's where that final resting place or that I'm trying to build a TikTok audience. I want to build an Instagram audience. And when we start talking about that avatar, I'm clear my audience is 70 percent female and my number one age group is 45 to 54, followed by that 30, 35 to 44 age bracket. If you know that 70 percent of your people right is right here in this cluster. That means you should you talk they language, you know, uh, so I don't talk old men or young men language. I talk female language. I talk about the issues women have. Uh, and and that and that's why I'm drawn to them. Right. I understand their issues. And all I'm hearing is it's not about you, too. Right. It is 100 percent about your clients. It's about attracting people who want to buy and sell mobile homes. And then there's going to be eight thousand students. That's who you're talking to. And everybody wants to talk to everybody. It ain't about everybody, right? It, it, it's that niche. And then you're using the number one, you're using the number one and the number two search engines in the world, Google and YouTube. And I'm hearing, eh, I don't really have to be nowhere else because this is working. <laughs> you know, one of your students could take it and they could work TikTok and yeah. another student could take it and they could work Instagram, right? You, yeah. you, oh man, look, look at here. <laughs> I'm so happy you said that. I'm so happy you said that because you mentioned, man, the shiny object thing. I just got 
two different boxers just yesterday. Man, Jay, you need to be on Clubhouse. Jay, get get on Clubhouse. I'm like, I'm focusing on my house. Like, <laughs> where there's so much opportunity to get better and improve on what I'm doing that I don't even have time to go after anything else right now because I still have more work to do here. And if I get focused on the next thing, now I'm in the pool with everybody else. I'd rather just keep my focus on this main thing because this is what's helping everybody out. Mm -hmm. If I lose my focus, they lose their focus. I'm glad we're talking about Clubhouse. So I I have, well, first of all, I'm not an Apple person, okay? Mm -hmm. So I gave my invitation to my son because he is Apple and I want him to go figure out because he's figuring out who his avatar is, if his avatar might be Clubhouse. And I've told people, I see people every single day on Facebook, I'm going to say this because they're going to get pissed, distracted by damn clubhouse and you don't have a business plan <laughs> for your business the, to hell with a club house right and i'm like everybody clubhouse club if you don't have a business strategy going into clubhouse understanding that their users are the consumers you need to be in front of you're wasting your time over wait can you do you remember what you said you, you, it ain't the clubhouse it's whose house is it, said that house. i gotta focus on my house <laughs> Say it again. exactly and so it is a shiny object everybody right now is on this whole clubhouse thing i want to know what did you launch i want to know what did you create I want to know how many sources, revenue sources, do you have that are consistent? You know, I know they talk about passive income. That's almost really a lie because you still need to market the passive, right? <laughs> it's there, but you still got to attract people to it. Man, you just made my day. That club, <laughs> your clubhouse statement was everything. And I didn't want people to feel as though I was picking on them, but I'm seeing people in real estate over on Clubhouse. And if that is not a part of your business strategy, Clubhouse to some is what TikTok is to others. A total dang on distraction. Stop doing it. I need y'all to get the business plan, the marketing plan, and the social media plan. But it all, all these plans service one dang on thing, that business plan. And the business call is, business plan is to meet your goals and your objectives. But don't nobody want to put that work in. I know you put that work in. Cause, cause <laughs> you, look, we talking. And KPI, if y'all didn't know, key performance indicators, right? So he know exactly what's working, what ain't working. They looking at those numbers all the time mm -hmm. to make sure that they're catering to, catering to the needs and the wants of the avatar. Oh, There's yeah. a guy, he might be watching us. His name is Freddie Taylor. Freddie Taylor gave his avatar a name. I don't know if her name is Hazel or Helen, but she's that grandmama. Uh, and he talked and I wanted to knock him out because he said she got the fat under her arms. I'm like, I got the fat under my arms. He knew exactly who she was, right? Down to the fat under the arms. And I said, now, nah, that is a deep avatar right there. But it's that grandmother who didn't spend a lot of money, but believes in education, wants to educate her grandchildren. And he knows her like the back. It's like he has an intimate relationship right. with his avatar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, you, you talked about coming over to Google, doing the search. So anytime anyone is searching for trailer, mobile, probably some other terms, I'm making the assumption you're coming up on page one of all Google searches because you did mention blog content and the fact that you also have this video mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. You guys are bomb. <laughs> bomb, bomb, bomb. So I want to see if people have any questions for us, but I want you to tell people the service that you provide and how they can do business with you. Yeah. So again, you know, we are the founders of Trailer Cash Academy, where, you know, if you're interested, you know, a lot of people want to get into real estate, maybe they don't have the money, the knowledge, the team that, you know, you may think that you need to actually get those deals done. We teach people how to get started with mobile home investing. And a lot of our students, I would say 95% of our students have never done a deal before in real estate. They know they want to get into it. Um, and this is a great way to build passive income. It's a great way to, you know, flip deals really quickly. You know, we have students closing deals in hours versus weeks and months. Um, and so we train exactly, we share our whole blueprint and system on how we've been able to do over 400 deals and how you can get started in real estate. And we also, um, we help you in terms of the coaches, like, 
like it's not just us. We can only do so much. We need to continue to spread our message to more people. But in the meantime, when you get in the program, we need to make sure you're not alone. So we've got coaches. They've done over 20 deals in one year themselves. They're going to help support all of you. So if you guys are interested, you guys can find us on YouTube, uh, youtube.com backslash Trailer Cash Academy. Look us up. Ton of free information on there. Testimonials. A lot of free content. You know, get that information and then decide if we're the right fit for you. Excellent. So how much money would one just and I want you to pad this a little bit for me. Would one need in order to get started investor in investing in mobile homes? Great question. So obviously there is an investment in your education side and then there's an investment in your business side. So we say, you know, you can you can choose the school of hard knocks. If you choose the school of hard knocks and you decide I can just do this on my own. You can literally get started in this business anywhere from about five hundred to a thousand dollars. But what we recommend, even if it's not with us, find a coach out there, mentor that you resonate to have some money set aside for your education. So we say have somewhere between two to three thousand uh, dollars starting out. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking two to three thousand. That's not enough for me to go and buy a new home and fix it up and then resell it. But that's the beauty. A lot of what we're teaching, we're teaching our students, let's not use our money first. Let's go out. Let's take advantage of the same no money strategies that we've learned in real estate. We're going to use those with mobile home investing. And then after you do that, let's continue to do that, build up our revenue and our business first. So then when the time comes of a fix and flip opportunity or buy and hold, at least you're pulling money out from your business, the revenue your business has generated versus your, your hardened cash right now. So you flipped over 400 mobile homes. Have you decided to hold any of them? Yeah, we have a portfolio of mobile homes that we cash flow. And that was our initial goal is we wanted to fire our bosses. So we were like, right. how much is our bill and how many mobile homes is that we need to get to be able to leave our job? And so we yeah. were able to successfully do that. Um, after we calculated everything within six months of actually starting to flip mobile homes. Um, so we have a portfolio of homes. Um, and then after that, it was just about scaling and really building our business. And we started introducing a lot of the no money strategies and really flipping them as fast as we can. So we can, we can really build on the volume of the deals. Can you share with me when you look at the numbers, could you share with me what you think a, a sweet deal would look like? You bought it for so much. What, what, what's a sweet deal? Yeah, sweet deal. What's one of your sweet deals? <laughs> one of our sweet deals. When we find a deal, let's just say we're able to get it for under five thousand dollars. We might find this property for twenty five hundred dollars. It might need about let's just say let's keep the numbers even twenty five hundred dollars worth of work. So we're all into this home for five thousand dollars, and we were even able to get some free lot rent out of the deal where we were able to talk to the park managers. Hey, I'm trying to bring value. You know, I want to make sure the home is up to park standard, but I want to bring in a long term buyer to the home. So we're able to get some free lot rent all in at this home for five thousand dollars. And then we turn around and sell this home for thirty thousand dollars on payments where our buyer comes in and brings down a down payment of five thousand dollars. And now we're cash flowing anywhere, depending on what you want, anywhere from three hundred to five hundred dollars per month for four to seven years. And then that's not even including interest. That you can add on that as well. Yeah, yeah. And well, you know my I so I just my mouth just dropped, right? Because I, I <laughs> love that. So someone wanted to know what trainings do you recommend about YouTube uh training? Um did, did is it, I would say check out my man on video uh, who I'm going to personally use. And he trained the young lady who wrote the book on YouTube for real estate professionals. Can you share some insight around creating an avatar that's coming in from Jackie? So you mentioned your avatar and I think Jackie has another business. I think she inboxed me. So I'm, I'm going to let you because you know who your avatar is. What did you take in consideration in creating that avatar? Yeah, so we really tried to figure out, you know, who the easiest way for us was saying, hey, who were we at the time that we really needed this help and really just build it out from what we actually needed in that moment, kind of go back in time before we even started flipping homes. What was our biggest problem? What kind of income did we bring in? What kind of money did we actually need? How old were we? And, and what is the range that's the best for this type of business? So we kind of 
took it back a couple of steps and really just thought about ourselves um, and just kind of built ourselves into an avatar and as who we were at the time we really needed this. And that's on the education side. On the mobile home investing side, we just started to look at our data. We teach our students to do a lot of testing in your market to figure out what type of market you're in, what type of buyer is in your market, who are they, where do they work, um, what's their uh, race, you know, um, how much do they bring in per year, and then how much are they willing to spend for a home. Once you start testing and trying things out, that data is going to come to you where you're able to actually create your avatar yeah. yourself just through that data. Yeah, if you can survey people that are interested in this, that's the best way because they're going to tell you who they are. Um, and so we really built a small community of people on Facebook initially and just surveyed them and really started talking to them, doing quick interviews, like who's interested in this and who are they? Like, I want to see their face. I yeah. want to be able to get into their head and what's their biggest problem and how can we solve it? So, you know what, um, you... One thing, just like that blue ocean strategy that I just pulled out of what you just said was you understood what your problems and your pain point were. And then you came back and positioned your product in order to solve your own pain point, because clearly you knew you weren't the only person with that pain point. Exactly. Yeah. And I know that people come up every single day with these great business ideas. And the question is, all the time is, one, we got to go back and research it. But then more importantly, we need to understand we need to solve problems. It, it, you, you are solving a problem, an affordable housing problem. The fact that a lot of young investors want to come into this world and might have limited funds. You're giving them the ability to have that passive income, right? Uh, and here's what is really, really sad. African-American home ownership has not grown since they came out with fair housing in 50 years. We're still, I think I heard we might've went up 2% in the last couple of years, but we've been hovering at that 42% every since 1968. And that's not acceptable when we spend trillions of dollars every single year. So this is a way Regardless to student loan debt, right? Regardless to uh, pr even probably some credit issues, right? If you can scrape that money together and we coming into the beginning of a new year, y'all supposed to get a little stimulus check. We don't know what that's going to look like. <laughs> supposed to get your tax returns, right? Mm -hmm. Invest in a mobile home. Yeah. Invest in a mobile home. So I'm going to see if they have any more questions for us. Um, mm -hmm. But I really, one, you all just give me hope. I told you before we hopped on, I love it when I'm seeing young people just handle their business. I, you know your business, right? You sound like you've been doing this your entire dang on life, like you was in the crib selling trailer homes. <laughs> um, I want to uh, thank you, and I want you to tell people once again how they can connect with you so that you can help them leverage these little checks they're getting ready to get at the first of the year in order to start creating a legacy for themselves. Absolutely. So the best place to get in touch with us is on YouTube, youtube.com slash trailer cash academy. Um, and we have a ton of free content. Definitely comment below the videos. Let us know you're watching and we'll be able to take care of you. And I just wanted to add one thing when you're talking about getting those checks. We always talk about our businesses and our enterprise value, but uh, we fail to focus on our interpersonal value, which is ourselves. And I always tell people, man, I never really started to scale my business until I started to scale myself. So take some of that money, even before you decide to focus on mobile home investing and decide how am I going to invest in myself, my personal development? How am I going to move the needle there? Because that's really the foundation of everything. You can have all this knowledge, but if you don't have the right mindset, you'll get nowhere. Come through, come through, come through. <laughs> well, guys, you know what? Uh, Jay and Samara, they have really done me a favor today. Today, the reason we are streaming live to Facebook is because this is exactly what you will receive inside of Six Figures in 12 Months, our membership site. So everyone who I'm interviewing, these are the lessons I get. Like they just poured in to me. These are the lessons I get to get that I am going to be sharing once per month with our new membership group. And it was so much knowledge to be gained. And I'm going to say this because the average age of a realtor is 55. I want you to get around you some younger folks. 
And I want you to let your old ego go and let them educate you. I'm 50 and I'm learning something new every single day from someone younger than me, which is why if you're under 40, you could call me TT because I'm coming for the knowledge. I want to thank you guys for being here with me today and Facebook. Reach out to them. Ghani, look, do right with your money. Do right. They flipped for over 400 mobile homes and they have a portfolio of passive income that allowed them to quit their job. And Samara, gonna slide back because you're looking real cute. She getting ready to drop that baby for us. Don't you want to get home with your baby? Look at her looking cute. You didn't even know that, did you? It really wasn't two of them on this interview. It was three of them on this interview. <laughs>